Hi, John Clements here for the UMass Fruit Advisor. Today is Wednesday, September 6, 2006, and we're actually at the end of a fairly long day where we visited, already visited three vineyards in Connecticut, part of the uh, Connecticut uh, Wine Trail. This is the fourth vineyard. And Arthur Tuttle uh, from UMass Amherst, who's been involved in scouting these grapes as part of a, a SARE and uh, a grant that to help the Connecticut growers out. Um, there's scouting also going on in Massachusetts by uh, uh, people from our cranberry station. And again, it's part of a SARE project. So Arthur's gonna tell you about some of the disease problems and insect problems that they're looking at in East Connecticut and Massachusetts vineyards this year and trying to get the grape growers, the wine growers um, up to snuff with uh, integrated pest management and help them out with some of their, their disease and insect problems. I'm Arthur Tuttle from UMass Extension. This is one of four vineyards that we're scouting on a weekly basis for all the diseases and all the insect pests for the entire season. And here we have a situation where there's been some powdery mildew and some downy mildew and then incredibly wet weather, lots of rain, some fruit cracking, mostly because of the the rain, but the, the berries were weakened by the disease. This year we've had rain almost all summer long, except for maybe a couple weeks in early August. Uh, growers have had to spray just about every single week since late April, early May. It's a lot of fungicide use. It's possible we're seeing some resistance, especially to the SI fungicides, which would be Nova and Rubigan in this case. But also the weather, it's just, un it's relentless. Coverage is a problem. Uh, having, having the fungicides run off with all the rain and so many different diseases present. Starting off with Phomopsis early season, then there was quite a bit of downy mildew um, there's been black rot, there's been botrytis, and also powdery mildew. And as we get close to harvest, there are a whole bunch of ripe rots that become problems. Moth. This is a trap that has the great berry moth pheromone. And we have in the, um, in the block, oh, probably 200 pheromone ties. So we're, we're releasing the pheromone. It's, this, it's the pheromone produced by the female the sex pheromone and it's supposed to confuse the males so they can't find the females to mate with so the population crashes. And so far we're, we, we have had very few great berry moths in the traps, far fewer than last year. So it looks like it's really reducing the number of, of males that actually get into the interior of the block. Here is one of the ties that's a plastic impregnated with this female sex pheromone. We have them every oh, eight feet or so at this height, right in the canopy. So we're flooding this block of Chardonnay grapes with, this, with the pheromone. And the, the, the moths are coming in mostly from the woods two generations a year. We're about at the end of the second generation and we're seeing you know, nothing in the trap this week. This location had very few this year. It's one of the one of the locations with the with the sex pheromone. Other places were trapping, but we don't have the pheromone, and we we're getting 50 or 60 moths a week during the two peak periods. So this method does seem to be reducing the number of, of moths that get into the interior of the block. In this Chardonnay block. We had a pretty big powdery mildew infestation, which started around the 10th to the 15th of July. It came on very suddenly, but the uh, inoculum must have snuck through a few weeks before that. And the grower had switched from a Captech and sulfur program to using other materials like diphane, ritamil, abound. Uh, he was focusing a lot on trying to get rid of downy mildew, which he had some of, and which other growers in the area had a lot of problems with. And somehow the powdery mildew slipped through. He had a ton of mildew on the fruit for several weeks. He pulled leaves off. He sprayed um, 
many different things to uh, take care of it. And it's better, but it's still going to be a big problem. There will be some significant crop loss here. As you can see, they've dropped a lot of fruit, cut it off. Uh, there's cracked berries from the heavy rains. The, in, in the cracked fruit, there is some rot, as well as uh, insects coming in. I should mention that as part of this uh, SARE project, uh, we bought and installed several weather stations. The weather stations were purchased from Spectrum Technologies to monitor um, the, the precipitation and the leaf wetness and the temperature in these vineyards as part of uh, the environmental conditions to get a better handle on what's causing the disease problems. Arthur brings along a laptop computer and the other people who are involved in this project. There's, there's two stations in Massachusetts, several in Connecticut and downloads the weather data on a weekly basis and it goes out a newsletter and is posted to the uh, New England Grapes website.